Hello and welcome to another of my series of videos looking at what remains of some old Midland and Great Northern joint railway lines here in Norfolk. In the next couple of videos I'm going to look at the line from North Walsham to Melton Constable. This line joined up the Yarmouth and North Norfolk railway line at North Walsham with the Lynn and Fakenham line at Melton Constable. It ran for 17 miles across country through Felmingham, Aylsham, Bluestone, Corpusty and Saxthorpe to Melton Constable. In this first part we're going to look at the line from North Walsham to Aylsham and in the second part we'll look round Aylsham and then move on to Melton Constable. So let's get started. But before we do that one last map and then I promise no more maps but they do help to explain the layout at more detailed locations. This is North Walsham. The green line is the Great Eastern Railway line and the blue line is our line the Midland and Great Northern. I have marked four crosses on here to mark the locations that we shall be looking at. The bottom cross is the site of North Walsham Town Station, followed by the second cross which is where the our line passes over the Norwich Road, after which comes the third cross which marks the junction where the line to Mundersley continues northwards and our line diverges to the west, after which it passes under the Great Eastern Railway line marked by the fourth cross. Our line then continues round to the west. Okay, let's finally go down and start having a look round. So this is the site of North Walsham Town Station approximately 24 and a half miles from Yarmouth Beach. This was a busy station with a passing loop, two platforms, signal box, footbridge and a goods yard. We're looking towards Great Yarmouth and the line from there is now the A149 road that you see here. You have to imagine the railway here was on an embankment. Because of this the station building was, was on two levels with a large brick staircase to access the upper level and the platforms. By the way, I took these shots last autumn when I looked at the Yarmouth line, hence the leaves etc. and bare trees. In this view we are looking in the other direction. This main road follows the alignment of the old railway. The traffic lights you can see mark the spot where the railway crossed over the Norwich Road on a plate girder bridge, number 138. But as you can see, all embankments and bridge have been cleared away to accommodate the new road. Now after crossing the Norwich Road, we come to the site of the junction where the Melton Constable line drops down away to the left, while the line to Mundersley continues on in the direction of the main road. In order to drop down and pass beneath the Great Eastern line, required a falling gradient of 1 in, 160, one in 64. No problem in this direction, but heavy trains in the opposite direction, if checked by the home signal, sometimes found it difficult to restart and were even known at times to have to reverse and take a run at the gradient. Now we are at the point where the line passes beneath the Great Eastern Line from Norwich to Cromer. We are, we are looking in the direction of where the line has left the Mundersley Line and dropped down and round to pass under this bridge. Now this is Plate Girder Bridge number 137, a typical Midland and Great Northern Railway bridge. And from here the line continues towards Melton Constable in this direction, where we should be going next. So now we continue along the Weaver's Way 
on the old alignment of the railway along behind these houses and we come to Oak Road which actually ended just before the railway on the left and here there would have just been a foot crossing and as we go along this path which is nicely converted from the uh, old railway we come to Station Road now originally Station Road would have ended just to the left and on the right the road would have turned and followed the railway line towards North Walsham. The station actually associated with this road is the Great Eastern Railway Station in North Walsham, adjacent to the town station of the Midland and Great Northern Railway. And now we're further along behind some houses along the, uh, this footpath. Continuing along, we come to where the line crossed Tungate Road via a level crossing. Originally, the default position of the gates was across the road, but once motor traffic increased, this was changed to across the railway. Also of interest is the style of the gates. These had a vermilion warning triangle rather than the normal red target type. You can just make out the crossing keeper's cottage on the left. This is built in the typical Wilkinson and Jarvis style and was obviously number 28 as the owner has very kindly put this plaque on the wall. As we continue along you'll notice how the path is fairly level. There is however generally a falling gradient to Aylsham. Having said that, here we are on a small embankment of about five to six metres. But that's probably as high as the embankments are along here, this bit anyway. Now originally, um, fence posts along the line were wooden, but the cost and limited availability saw Marriott-style concrete posts such as here use from about 1908 onwards and moving a bit further along we now approach bridge number 136 a royal joist type underbridge this is uh, across Felmingham Road this is a typical Midland and Great Northern Railway bridge solidly built out of a blue type engineering brick still in good shape after over 120 years Right, so let's get back up onto the old line and we'll carry along towards Felmingham. So now we're back up on the old railway, albeit several weeks later. In order to keep the gradients to a minimum, we are entering an area of quite substantial earthworks. We've just come from being on an embankment and now we're entering a cutting. Even so, there were still several sections of one in 100. And as we walk along this path called the Weaver's Way, some recent strong winds have certainly left their mark here. I've heard of leaves on the line, but this is ridiculous. Funny to think that this was probably just a sapling when the railway was running. More storm damage and a fine line up of concrete fence posts. Further along now, and this is the parapet of the next bridge, number 135. This is a rolled joist underbridge. And as you can see, we're on a substantial embankment. I couldn't get down there, but you can see the curved wing walls on one side. The other side, unfortunately, is covered with foliage, but I uh, can assure you there is one there somewhere. And uh, we'll have a look at the other side with straight wing walls. 
I mean, this is only a, f- a farm track going underneath, but uh, it still is quite a large structure, nevertheless. This is the approach now to Felmingham Station. But first, we cross Church Road by bridge number 133. We've lost number 134. I believe that was a small culvert under the railway, which must have been out of sight. And this, as I say, is 133. This is over um, Church Road, which we is here. So this is a view of the bridge from the road. It's a segmental masonry arch with curved wing walls and some lovely skew brickwork. It does show though signs of some rebuilding and in some publications this road is actually referred to as Skaten Road. So here we have the station buildings of Felmingham still intact but boarded up and on the other side would have been two sidings where we're looking at now. You will notice the uh, single platform here. One platform of course is this has been a single line from North Walsham. This is a typical Wilkinson and Jarvis office style building but with gold brick coins which were a favourite of William Marriott. And this was the last office style to be built. This station was called an intermediate station because it was in the middle of a block section. And the platform at 120 feet is unusually long for such a small station. There was a small signal cabin here, but that was converted into a tariff shed and but has since disappeared. This was probably a lamp room or pump house for the provision of water. This is a view from the platform. That's the station house through the trees. And this is another view of the old station house next to the station. The platform is just the other side of the house. This was built in 1913, first of a new style constructed of red brick in stretcher bond with a rendered upper story. Square window heads with tile drip bars above the windows and tile sills. Roofs had exposed rafter ends with a slate covering. Now this is the other end of the station looking towards North Walsham. The two sidings would have branched off about here into the yard which is now a car park for the Weaver's Way. Because of the track layout here, any wagons coming from the Aylsham direction had to go through to North Walsham and then return so they could be shunted back into the yard. This is where the sidings were and this looks like the old loading dock. There was also cattle pens and a coal allotment for Thomas Moy, a well-known Colchester coal merchant. Now, these old crossing gates are of interest. They, I don't think they're original MNGN design, but might have been made more recently um, as some sort of a replica. Moving on from Felmingham now. Interesting that we have just come off an embankment over the road and now we're in a cutting. And uh, these steps give some idea of the size of the cutting. Now this shot also gives an idea of how straight this section of the alignment is. And um, we're now on this wide embankment. This just shows that there were some pretty hefty earthworks along part of this railway as we head further west, a bit further along here. And now we are approaching the crossing of Stowheath Road via a level crossing number 27 with a typical brick gatehouse. In some publications and maps the name of this crossing is shown as the Highway or Banningham. This building on the other side of the road probably needs no explanation judging by the hole in the back wall. 
and further along again. And this is an unusual fence strain post. I've only ever seen either metal or wooden. Never a combination like this. And here we're coming up to bridge number 132. A joist in concrete type carrying the line over King's Beck. Quite a big structure, rebuilt in 1912. Large abutments and a large central pier. King's Beck seems to be one of many stretches of water called becks that link up to form a waterway from Roughton or Roughton further north to the River Bure in the south near Buxton, a distance of around 13 miles. A beck, by the way, is another word for a stream. And here is a stream being carried under the railway via a small culvert. OK, back up on the old alignment. <coughs> and dare I say it, a bit further along. Some very mature trees have been grown up in the 60 years since this line was closed or just over 60 years actually now this fascinates me there's a post at an angle up on the bank there and the other boundary on the other side is quite a distance across it seems a very wide area just for a single track of railway there's the other post right up on the embankment there there were no sidings, there was no passing loops, this was just a plain single track. That just seems very wide. Now this possibly could be an old gradient board post, I'm not sure about that. Now this is bridge number 131. This is an elliptical masonry type. And this was refaced in 1912 because in 1912, during the summer, a serious storm caused disastrous flooding in East Anglia. Several bridges were damaged, even leaving one train marooned at Aylsham. So I suspect that could be the reason for the refacing. I mean the storm, not the marooned train. You can see some metal brackets up on the brickwork there, which would have uh, supported the the telegraph wires. Now let's go up up top and have a look. Now this is Tuttingdon Road over the railway. You can see we're quite a way up here and that's looking towards back towards North Walsham and this is looking towards Aylsham the way we will be going. And uh, back on the path again. Again, in this avenue of very mature trees. Now hopefully this is a badger set or a foxhole. Because if it isn't, there's a pretty large rabbit about somewhere. But uh, I couldn't see any footprints or poor prints or whatever they're called now this is the approach to level crossing number 26 at green lane this is the gatehouse this was originally built in brick and rendered but in 1923 it was extended in concrete block with rock face coins from the crossing the old line is no longer a right of way but from the diverted footpath you can see where it went by the line of bushes and fence posts. There we are there. Now, at the end of the bushes, the old alignment has been completely obliterated by this farmer's field. But from those bushes there, it went across and into Aylsham. In the distance, it went across in the direction of that arrow, and in the distance there is the Aylsham Bypass, which is the A140. And the other side of that bypass is the town. 
Now in part two, I will follow the old line into Aylsham, explore Aylsham and then carry on to Melton Constable. So I'll see you in part two. And thanks for watching.